Okay, I, now I have to say another thing from another conversation. Because when these conversations come, it kind of gives me, um, you know, like this is what's on people's minds and this is what people are noticing. So one thing that is trippy is, um, you know, I was born in 61 and um, so I'm going to turn 61 in July and the, um, so I'm living my 61st birthday. When you get to your birth day, it's like the celebration of that year. Now you can claim it. You lived that whole year. You know, you made it through. You became 61. And, um, so it's kind of trippy. I was born in 61 and I'm living my 61st year. I don't know. It's kind of synchronistic or something like this is my year. <laughs> I've claimed it. I've already said I claimed this year as my year. So, um, when I was talking to my mom, she was um, talking about something, um, you know, she was outside trying to do something and she said she doesn't feel old. But yesterday she was having a day where she was super stiff. So I, you know, told her about the, you gotta do your stretches. That's what I keep trying to tell people. You gotta do your stretches. If you just stretch your muscles and um, you will make them more limber, you'll get more, um, like when you go in and you exercise and you kind of tear that muscle up a little bit, it goes in and starts like your body goes in to heal it, to make it stronger. And so when you keep doing that and doing that, you become stronger and stronger. So when you're stretching your muscles and you are allowing them to stretch and kind of tear a little bit, you're lengthening them. You're making them more limber. You make them more easy to move around so you're not so stiff. And that is what happens, you know, as you're aging, you get more and more stiff and you're not doing, working out, your muscles are atrophying, they're being harder to use. So it's super important to put that into your, you know, your routine, your routine of taking care of yourself. Do some stretches, do some light. You don't have to, you know, be a bodybuilder and lift, you know, 200 pounds to be in, you know, it can be some small amount of weight. But treat it like it's heavy, you know, act like it's heavy. Don't just laugh. Yeah, that's nothing. No, you got to actually flex your muscles as you are pulling it up. Use those muscles. Make the muscle work. Don't just use, you know, your strength like that. And um, because you're not working anything out when you're doing that, you have to actually do something to the muscles. And the stretching, it keeps them so much more limber. Because she said, you know, she was trying to get something and then she fell down and she was having a hard time getting up because she just was really stiff. And she said she didn't get hurt or anything. It was no big deal. But she just noticed how stiff she was and she felt old there for a minute. And she's like 77. And oh, oh, because I had said that about the 61 in 61. And... um. She was like, it's so crazy now. I think 61 sounds so old. I mean, so young. And I said, I think it sounds young because I'm living it and I don't feel old. I don't feel old at all. And, um, you know, it's part of the programming is to age us and to get us to give up, to uh, not take care of ourselves, you know, because the meds and stuff are going to make you sicker and sicker. And most people, they rely on the meds. They don't do their own practices to take care of themselves. And they just depend on the quick and easy version, which is out to destroy you. So it's important for you to get into your practices, you know, the movement and stretching and you building some strength and um, breathing like all of those kinds of things need to be in your practice, like a daily practice of taking care of yourself, just like when you're planning your meals, you know, of figuring out what you need to eat and thinking of it as energy. You know, we've got to get more into realizing what food really is for a human body because everything has been so manipulated. But, um, you know, she was saying that she doesn't think that that is old anymore. You know, younger people, they all think it's old because they haven't lived that long. When you get to be in your 60s, you're like, geez, this isn't old. I used to think this was old. You don't feel old at all. You feel much smarter, much wiser. You feel like you've just come into your own, like you really see things that you didn't understand before. And that, you know, and that is the development of a person 
you know, and that's why they want to keep these generational divides. They want people to be disrespected when they get older. They don't want them to have any kind of uh, influence over the other generations because, you know, you've learned some stuff when you've lived some years, you know, you've learned, you've developed, you've come to understand yourself, you've come to understand relationships, you know, you have a different perspective than a young person. So you, you know, there's a lot of information you could share with a young person if they were taught throughout their lives that, you know, you go to your elders, your elders are whiz, are, are, have wisdom, you know, and that's where you want to go if you want to understand things that you haven't understood yet, you know, is to go to the elders and you would learn more. But they don't want that because they don't want us. They just want control over us. They don't want us to pass on information. So they want people to feel like, you know, they're super old by the time they're 50, you know, it's time to give it up. <laughs> and so many people haven't bought into it and have aged and been like, wait a minute, this isn't old. Like this is, this is a program they're selling that isn't true. You know, you aren't old. It doesn't have to do with the number of years. It has to do with how you treat yourself, how you take care of yourself. That's how you age. You know, a young person can be way older than an old person. It all depends on how they take care of themselves. And, you know, they do so much with the psyche to get people to just surrender, surrender their health. I mean, when you've got people who are 25 saying, oh, I'm so old, you know, my life's going to be over in another five years it's done. It's like, oh my God, you haven't even started reaching the serious lessons yet. Like, fuck, the, st the stuff you learn through your 30s and 40s, is, you know, you learn so much, you know, about relationships, about who you are. And, you know, it's all such important information that you need to understand yourself. But, you know, they, they just want to keep everybody so divided and so, you know, focused on the outside and not focused on the inside. So, you know, it is so much with, you know, like I keep saying, I'm a broken record. You know, you have to see it for yourself. You have to want to understand things on another level. You have to question things like, uh, you know, they want it to be, you know, well, these people are old and they're dying and stuff. Well, no, you guys are just killing us. And you're, you know, it's just another uh, beard, you know, just like the flu has been a beard to cover up mass death. You know, and, and another reason that you will accept more toxins into your body. You know, it's all, you know, this destructive narrative that they are trying to trap people into so that they surrender their health and essentially commit suicide. Because you just, you know, I mean, you got big pharma to protect you. Why do you need to do anything? Just go down to the bar, <laughs> get some bar food, drink some beer, enjoy your life. <laughs> Don't talk to anybody. <laughs> Don't connect. Only talk to people who think exactly like you, you know, don't, don't go outside, you know, of uh, those kind of realities. You wouldn't want to get some new information. You wouldn't want anything to penetrate, right? So the, you know, it, but it's up to each person, you know, they've got to notice like, oh my God, I'm so biased. I'm so judgmental. I am so, notice who it is that you think is stupid or less than. And when they, when people think like this is not true, like that they don't give us our ideas about people, it really comes, um, you know, clear when you think about like Pamela Anderson. Even uh, the other day I was watching a movie and, um, oh, what's that girl, Tara? I think her name's Tara, um, Tara something. She was popular in the 80s, but she was also like a Pamela Anderson, just like a um, blonde, you know, the, certain girls, how they look, they just wanted to put them and typecast them into like this bimbo. And so they would put them on all these movies that these girls wanted to be famous. So they would put them in, you know, maybe like barbed wire or something like, oh, look, you know, you're getting to be in this movie. But it's, you know, a dud of a movie that's not going to really get them what they want. You know, recognition for their wonderful acting skills. So, these girls get typecast into, 
you know, you put on a movie with Pamela Anderson, are you going to go like, oh, this is going to be a good movie? No, you put on a movie with Anthony Hopkins, are you going to go, oh, this will be a good movie? You know, they do that on purpose. So, and we allow it. Like, we would put that movie on and go, oh, my God. As soon as I saw that girl come on, Tara, whatever her name is, I can't remember. I mean, and plus, you know, for her to try and keep her beauty and stuff, she, you know, she started um, becoming very public about her plastic surgery struggles and stuff. She was doing all sorts of shit to her body and, and she was getting, you know, a bunch of jacked up stuff. So, you know, she was out there, when, but as soon as she came into the movie, I was like, Oh, this is not going to be, <laughs> this movie's not going to be like a class A kind of, it had Christian Slater, which I always kind of thought of him as being in more, uh, you know, a more higher quality movies. So I don't know. I mean, were they trying to help her or bring that? I mean, I, I don't know, but I know for sure, you know, there's certain people that come into a movie and right away, as soon as you see them, I'm like, oh, this is going to be stupid. This movie's going to be lame. You know, that person's in this. And now after seeing about that Tom and Pam, Tommy and Pam or Pam and Tommy, whatever it's called, and um, especially after I talked shit about it, because I thought it was just going to be sensationalizing about their, uh, you know, their sexcapades or whatever. Like, I didn't know. I thought that they had done all that. Like, I didn't know anything about their story. But then to see in the story of how much she's struggling to be, you know, thought of as a serious actress. And, you know, she's wanting to get parts where she can really you know, try and see if she can, you know, be these other people. And, um, she is struggling so much with her, um, feeling bad about herself and being just treated like a sex object. And, um, you know, she wanted to be in good parts and maybe she was a good actress, but they weren't going to give her those parts because they had to typecast her into a sex symbol, you know, somebody that guys would desire so that they could sell posters and, I mean, they use these people, you know, these people go to go to Hollywood so that they can, you know, enter this entertainment business and they just get used, you know, it's um, for these people to manipulate our minds and for them to profit off of these other people. So it's, uh, but each person has to see stuff for themselves to recognize it and feel the ickiness that this world brings, you know, it's all, um, you have to feel the ickiness. And so my mom was like, you know, she's super upset because there's something going on with something with a space station. And I don't know, Russia's saying they're going to leave the American there and take everybody else. Like, I don't know the story. I just told her, I don't know anything about it, but you can be guaranteed Anything that is going on it is all part of the, it's got to be so outrageous that it's going to wake people up to get their attention. So people are like, oh my God, I wouldn't want to be stranded out there. And, you know, we've had a, quite a few movies showing us like, <laughs> what a horrible thing that would be to be stranded out in space all by yourself. So, you know, I mean, um, everything is to wake people up. And you do have these two forces going back and forth, you know, like those movies in the programming will help people to wake up because they'll hear that story and then we'll go back to that movie and then we'll think like, oh my God, that would be horrible. And, you know, that's going to help them wake up to like, wait, why would you do that? How could you do that to somebody? You know, because the whole thing is pulling us into being uh, aware in this world to start paying attention because everybody's living on autopilot, just trying to survive. They don't even know what the world consists of. But, and they're, you know, aging you <laughs> as you go and keeping you divided and stuff. So, you know, as you age, taking care of yourself will make you feel so much better. It will make you not feel like you are old and decrepit. Simple things. Watch what you're putting into your body. Think about what you are putting into your body. You know, if you're a heavy drinker, it's probably a good time to, you know, stop doing that. You know, your liver and your uh, has to process all of these chemicals and alcohol is a big one. 
and uh, especially for women, it even tears their body up more. A woman who's a heavy drinker as she ages, it will really, really fuck up their bodies a lot and uh, will age them way faster. And it will with anybody because, you know, you're, you are putting too much wear and tear on your body. You've got to think about, you know, it's a machine. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you've got to think about how it works and, you know, what it takes to fuel it and all of the duress that it's under in this, in this environment, you know, so it is up to each person to recognize that. Um, but you know, in the programming, they're just going to feel like, oh, my body's old. I'm old. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I have no value to this world anymore. That's all programming, you know, and you have to b break free from that program as well. You know, and you do, I mean, it's going to take so much of your stress away when you just every outrageous, absurd, bullshit thing, instead of feeding it your energy, just let it go and just know like, okay, this is part of the movie. This is part of the awakening. This is what people have to observe in order to pull their consciousness into a state of being where they have an awareness of what's real and what's not real. So anyways, I, oh, and I just keep getting this. This is like every day this has happened for the past four or five days. And, you know, I'm always talking about these high pitched frequencies that come in and attack into my ears. And it's really horrible. This one is a different, it, this sound that is coming in recently and it feels like something just, just dabs right in it's horrible and it is so loud the other day it was so fucking loud and i could still hear it it's fucked and um that's all i could hear in my head and all i could think about was those mk ultra people you know like they really can go in with these frequencies and that's all you can hear and then they come in and start telling you you know get your shotgun <laughs> there's demons go kill them you know like People don't, uh, uh, but it really, when they, when those come in and that is so loud and you can, it's stabbing into your ear and you can hear nothing in your head except for this horrendous high pitched sound. I started turning on music. I was trying to turn on something so I couldn't hear it so loud. It, it's really horrible and they are doing it. I, I know it's energy weapons. And I know not everybody is on the same frequency. It's going to affect some of us different than others. But it's fucked. If you, if you are in the frequency that they are attacking with, oh my God, it's fucked. And it is horrible. And I, I forgot I had wanted to talk about that. So I guess I was kind of fortunate that they did it right here, right now. Because um, it's been at awkward times. It's not been like every day at the same time. Because... Um, when I was having it where I was trying to turn everything on, it was definitely night. I, the curtains were closed. So, you know, it's all different times through the day, but it's so fucking loud. And it's so, it, it feels like you're being shot in the ear with something. It's, it's horrible. So, you know, I just, I want this. I, I, I can't even make it clear enough how bad I am anxious for all of this to, you know, to go the other direction, you know, we have to go through this, like the tsunami wave that is happening. We're in, we're in the wave, you know, it's coming at us and we have to go through this experience. Then things are going to be going another direction, but, um, yeah, I'll be so glad because once we start going another direction, I think it's clearly, you know, who's going to be the light will have taken over the dark. I mean, the dark still has some sort of hold on things because there wouldn't be these energy weapons coming in and attacking with frequency and stuff. That wouldn't be going on. And, um, oh, it's horrible. I, I can still hear it. Even when it stops with the immediate, like, slam in there, it is like it, it it's like echoes out. I don't know. It's fucked. Uh, I wish I could talk to somebody else who was having it happen and maybe, um, you know, I'd be able to understand how to explain it better, but it is, it is, it's really horrible. So, you know, we're fighting against everything. We're fighting against toxins. We're fighting against these frequencies. We're fighting against this weird, 
you know, um, thing that they're doing to reality, like of the changing stuff in the sky and moving backdrops. Like, I don't know how this is all, um, you know, I, I don't understand everything about this place. Um, you know, but I do know this is about consciousness waking up because when you do, you will see everything very differently than when you talk to other people, how they're seeing it. And, uh, you know, that's that three dimensional break as a jailbreak, you know, to move out of that mind fuck place and move into a place that's real. So anyways, you know, any of these horrible things that you're hearing and stuff, you just got to keep, you know, um, detaching from some of this stuff. I mean, some of the things you need to see if you're not awake yet. Yeah, you have to go through this experience to see. But for people who do know what the bullshit is, you know, like I'm just not watching any of it because it messes with your head. It makes you feel bad for people and stuff. And it's all an illusion. It's all just uh, trickery and stuff to um, either keep us feeling down or to, because um, you got the one group who wants to just keep you feeling down by just uh, drowning you in despair and trauma and all of that stuff. And um, then you have, um, what was it? I could see it really clear for a second. Um Well, the stuff that is happening, it is um, to just get people to wake up. I mean, that's all there is to it. It is, um, we're not going to go into Armageddon. They're not going to leave somebody out there in the space station or whatever. Because some of the stuff is just fake. It's just fake. Like I told, I was telling, um, oh, I was telling my daughter when we were talking about the programming. And I said, you know, there's people who are literally dead. Like they are not even alive right now, some of these uh, bad people. And they are, um, and the media is not telling us. The media is, you know, hiding this information. And the media is going to go down, obviously. But I said, even when they somebody's not around and all of a sudden they want us to believe that this person still is around, they put on old footage. They put on old footage of people. And, and they use CGI and stuff. So, you know, how can you be putting all your energy into that thinking it's real and hanging on every word? You know, you've got to detach and know that it's not real. And if it's not affecting you, do you really need to be draining your energy? You know, this is a time in history where you need your energy. You need to focus on you. You need to get yourself in tip top shape emotionally, physically, spiritually, all of it. And, um, you know, you can't be doing your work if you're focused on someone else's pain. So, um, and all of this stuff, just, just start paying attention, looking through things and seeing, you know, you start noticing in movies, what, how they talk about old people, like right now, how they talk about men, you know, just like in the older movies, how they talked about women, like it's all programming. It's all to get us to think the way they want us to think. And, um, you know, you have to yourself notice like, oh, bullshit. This is, this is some bullshit. And, um, you know, pull free, pull free from the narrative. And yeah, everything changes when you start being able to see through it and you aren't caught up in it. And, um, you know, like I've said about 10 zillion times, this is all about you getting this opportunity to understand you. And, you know, a lot of people have to understand that they are bullies and that they're negative and they have biases and stuff. All that is so it can come to the surface so that they can um, heal this stuff. So we're still in that, that part where we are going towards that. But Everything hasn't been revealed yet. Everything will have to be revealed. And that is going to, you know, show people the truth. And that is when we have the going the right side up. Where we will start seeing like, oh, these people were killed. Because the media has got to go down. I mean, the media is going to, the, they've been um, influencing people and the way they want them to see things, you know. It's so 
the stuff that they do, like even when I was talking to my daughter and she said that about the law, you're not allowed to talk about suicide like that in, on the news and uh, they're not supposed to be putting it in movies and stuff because it does create people to kill themselves more. And uh, you know that all of this stuff is all programming and they all know it. So they know this subliminal, subliminal I imaging and what it does. They know that these Pavlog theory trip, um, Pavlog, Pavlov theory, uh, things that they are putting, you know, they are putting these associations in our mind, you know, just like the other day when I was listening to that song that they are using in fresh. And, uh, I love that song and I was listening to music and I'm dancing and that song came on and I had the music pretty loud and I was thinking, oh man, if people hear that song in here, they would think like that that's what would go into their mind is that show because it's nonstop. That song is being associated with that show. And you know, that's what they do. That's how they do it. They get other, they, they associate things in our minds and we, it's how, um, in Pavlov's theory too, if you do certain things and you get a certain response, then you're going to go for that. So they know how to do all of that stuff to our psyche. They know how to make us dependent on information and stuff. But, you know, you have to be your own advocate and pull free and question things and notice that things aren't making sense. Notice the lies that they're telling because it's nonstop. They're nonstop lying to you. They don't know how to fucking do anything without lying. So <laughs> anyways, I'm going to seriously try and find something else to do today. But every time somebody says something to me, I keep getting more messages. Every time somebody says something to me, I'm like, oh, I should go talk about that. But um, and I think I probably say the same things all the time, but you know, we're reprogramming our minds. So, you know, I guess I've got to be a broken record too, because, you know, it's, it is us who has to do it for us. And most of us don't know how to do it. And for any of us who do figure it out, we need to share this information so other people can see, because it is so much, it's all in your psyche. It's all in your mind. And, um, you know, people's psyche is just completely being, um, it's being, um, and I have a lot of words coming in, but it is uh, being completely indoctrinated and programmed into a specific kind of agenda. And, um, you know, I mean, it's crystal clear. <laughs> All you got to do is start paying attention. So anyways, that's enough of me talking about this. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.